Sometimes it's really useful to have access to a lab environment to see how something works or just to test something out. Today we're going to be looking at creating a lab from scratch using the Windows Lab Kit. The Windows Lab Kit is a complete self-building lab environment that will allow you to test, validate and, and play around with modern desktops running Windows 10, Enterprise and Microsoft 365 apps. In the lab you get uh, Windows 10 Enterprise VMs, Windows 7 Enterprise VMs, a full config manager implementation running SQL 2017, uh, the ADK for Windows 10, an MDT server, MBAM on its own um, VM, Windows Server machines and uh, SQL Server in, in your config manager environment. Uh, as you can see here, it's, all, it's freely available, it's an evaluation kit. You can get it from the website link here. I'll put it in the description below as well. Uh, so let's just take a quick look through this website first then. So included as well as the, the on-premise solution that you're downloading and you have access to, to just run and, and install with just a few clicks, you're also provided with step-by-step -step lab guides to go through all the different things that you might need to do uh, when setting up a new environment and embracing the modern modern workplace. So yeah, it's, it's nice and simple to get started. We'll go through some of these lab guides in a few moments. So what do we need to get started? Well, you need, in this environment, you need a Hyper-V host. So you need the Hyper-V role installed. Uh, it supports 64-bit editions of Windows 10 and Windows Server. It's 2016. You obviously need admin rights on the device. You need 150 gig of disk space, ideally 300. You need fast spinning disks or SSDs. Uh, at least 16 gig of memory, ideally 32 if you want to run all the VMs at once. And a high-end processor so you can do more things at once. Uh, as you can see, it, you, it, it says you need a broad bandwidth to download the content. It is pretty big. It's about 30-ish gig, so it, it is quite quite big. It gets bigger when you unzip it and then start running the VMs and they start provisioning, so make sure you have that 300 gig space. Um, it also expires every 90 days, so this is something that is meant to keep you up to date. It's meant to give you new labs that you can paste through yourself and, and really get some experience in doing this, the latest and greatest things that are available for uh, for the modern workplace. So once you're ready and happy with the, the idea of using this lab evaluation kit, take a look at the top, click continue, and then fill in all your details. I'll just go ahead and fill my details in now. Okay, ready to go. So as you can see, we have two download buttons. They've just started downloading now. Uh, we'll leave that to finish up. All right, so once it's finished downloading, it looks a little bit like this. You've got two zip files, one about 30 gig and one about five meg. So we're gonna unzip those both and see what we get. Okay, let's see what we've got. So in the lab guides, we have uh, a couple of Word documents. We have the lab guide and the setup guide. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And in the lab, we have a load of files. So we've got setup and we've got a zip pack zip file. So the, uh, the setup essentially will unzip that for us and, and, and make that into something more useful. So we'll go ahead and do that. So as you can see, user interface, nice and pretty. We are going to click on next. And I've already read, read this, so I'm quite comfortable with the terms. Obviously, you can read it yourself. We're looking for an internet connected switch. And there we are, ready to go. So let's click next and it will begin provisioning that in the directory that I extracted it to. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. So 
All right. Well, that's um, that's done. So it, it said it would take several minutes. I think someone needs to look at the definition of several. Um, maybe me actually. That was that was probably about forty five minutes in total. Uh, anyway, so it says open the Hyper V Manager to monitor your status. So let's uh, click next. And there we go. So we, we've got a load of stuff extracted. That's really good. Let's open Hyper-V. Ooh, look, shiny. Got a load of clients that are running. We have a, uh, what is this, a config manager server, I guess, um, which isn't currently running. A DC and a gateway. Um, great. Okay. Well, let's assume that uh, the DC is doing some DC-related stuff. I'll give it probably... An hour or so and then start the config manager server uh, and we'll take a look then all right so i actually left it overnight um as you can see nine or so hours and what seems to have happened is it's turned off my domain controller and the config manager machine would never have turned on so i'm going to go ahead and turn these on and while it's doing that we'll take a look at some of the properties in it Okay, so secure boot enabled by default. That's good. One gig of memory, dynamic up to up to four four gig. I'll probably go ahead and turn that off at some point. Uh, two CPU will do. That's fine. And it's got a dynamically expanding hard disk, I assume. Uh, and it's it's created its own switch. This um this corpnet. So uh, and internet by the looks of it. So that's good. We'll take a look at that shortly. So with the domain controller having one gig of RAM, I'll just check how much the config manager server has by default. And we'll go into that. So again, one gig up to up to eight. I've got enough RAM in this machine, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off and give it um, eight gig of RAM to start with. It's got eight CPU, which is a good start. Uh, and it has a single disk dynamically expanding. So not ideal, but you know, it's a lab, so it should be fine. And we'll click start on that one. Notice each of these have uh, checkpoints, which are called base. It seems all of them have this. Yeah, so just taking a look. Uh, that's that's a, a checkpoint, essentially, of, of it before we've started making any changes. So when we need to revert for some of the labs we'll do later on, then that's, that, that's what that's for. All right, just while we wait for this config manager server to start doing some things, um, I'm going to take a look at the switch that it's created for config manager. So it's got this corpnet switch, and if I go into the virtual switches, you can see these two here were already existing, and these were these were mine already. So it's the corpnet it's created, which is a private network, and uh, it's called corpnet, and internet is a is a private network as well. So this isn't uh, likely to be some way for the servers to access the internet. That's that's through the gateway machine here. Um, if I show you the, the properties on this one, hopefully that will make sense. So we've got my internet connected Twitch is already connected to the gateway server here. And this is allowing them to have access to the internet through the corpnet. They have, a, have, they have the gateway set as their default gateway. So... The internet uh, switch isn't about accessing the actual internet. I think it's a dummy internet for for use on this machine here. This machine here is a, essentially pretending to be the internet. Um, and yeah, so we'll take a look at that in one of the labs later on. The lab setup guide also shows us the uh, server name and the roles and products that are built into those servers by default. So. As you can see, the DC is uh, hosting domain services, DNS, HTTP, and certificate services. MDT server obviously hosts MDT, and an ADK and WDS for, for simulating OSD builds. Uh, Config Manager 2002, which is pretty good. Um, it'd be nice to update that to the latest version soon. Again, WDS and MDT built into that. 2004 ADK, WSUS, and Server 2017. Uh, SQL Service 2017. Again, BitLocker uh, uh, admin 
and monitor on its own server with SQL 2017, which is interesting, um, on a server called Apple, App One. Gateway for remote access for internet connectivity. INET One is simulated internet like I like I expected. VPN, uh, RAS server, so um, that's that. And then the clients, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven, and they are various different states. So domain joined is two of them, work group joined is is the next two, and then five and six are bare metal, so they haven't been built at all for that for, for us to start OSD, and uh, Windows 7 for, for the upgrade lab later on. We also have the uh, username and password here, so as you can see, the local admin in each of the boxes is administrator with p at sswrd and uh, similar for the lab admin so i'm going to go ahead and change those at some point um it will change this one anyway for uh, just for me to get in easier um i've got an english keyboard and this is set up for us so i, I keep having to type the the at symbol the wrong way so it gets a bit confusing but other than that uh we'll keep it as standard right so i've just noticed that this um windows license has expired on this domain controller Taking a look at the uh, config manager server that I just logged into earlier on, this still ha this has the the evaluation still running, um, which is interesting. So I'm uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm just going to go ahead and um, extend this uh, this eval for now, uh, and see if that gives me a, a way out of this. Oh, okay. Let's just log in and see if that has helped. Cool. Okay. Good. So we have 180 days left on the eval. You know, it, it, it'll it do for now, I think. Um, that, that will be good for me to get started with some of these labs. So that's great. Okay. So let's take a look at the users that we get provisioned in this lab by default. Go into ADC. So our domain is corp.contorso.com and we have a an OU for corp, which is pretty good. And some user accounts, test user one, two, three, four, some service accounts for um no service accounts. Uh Computers, okay, everything's in here, right? Um, and we've got two clients, two domain joined clients. That's right. All good. Um, fine. Well, I think that's that's all I'm going to need for my uh, for my labs. So we'll leave that there. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and change my admin password for uh, the lab admin. Just need to find it. There he is. Okay, so I'll give this machine a quick reboot so I can log in with my new password. I don't need to reboot it, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway. And take a look in the meantime at the config manager server and see what we get with the config manager box. So uh, endpoint manager, just wait a few seconds for this to load up. And all good, so we hopefully we should see we've got some users, uh, loader users, and you've got all these standard um, admin users, and we've got the test users over here. I'm expecting a couple of devices, hopefully. Yep, client one and two, with no client on it though. Um, Gateway has a client, which is active, that's good. Not installed on the domain controller or Apple One, so interesting. Device collections. Uh, a random deploy master windows 8 image here but other than that fairly standard uh, this one is different i think um okay good so applications wise i'm thinking it's going to be empty yeah and packages should be a client yeah 
and OSD. We should have a standard boot image uh, and the task sequences are empty. Good. We'll head over into administration and just take a look at what we got for the updates. Why is this meant to be 2000? Uh, forget, what was it? 2002. Uh, so yeah, we got 2002 without these hot fixes in at the moment. We have 2103 ready to install. So I think I'm going to go ahead and install that in, in the next few minutes. Features wise, we'll get a load more features with 2103. Um, so we'll, we'll wait to enable those later on. Um, and then server wise, if we go into the site config, you'll be able to see that we have just the one server with all the roles on it at the moment. So that's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and update this uh, this machine with uh, the latest available installation of, of Config Manager. So I'll just go ahead and click on this installation here and I'll run the prereq check first just to see if this is going to work. I hope it'll work because it's a brand new server um, from the lab kit so I'm hoping that it's it's going to be good. Just going to take a look at the status of this update. It's been going for a little while now. Uh, okay, so uh, it says installation, but that's just the extraction that takes place during the prereq check. Um, prereq check, so uh, completed with warnings. Uh, let's take a look at two warnings. Then we've got uh, so we have potential SQL server performance issues. For me, that always comes up when I do a prereq check. Um, but there you go. I haven't really looked into it. And the other one is um, that HTTPS and enhan or enhanced HTTP should be enabled because just HTTP only uh, communication has been deprecated and will be removed in a future version. So as one of during one of the labs, we will be enabling uh, enhanced HTTP. Uh, to, to enable the cloud management gateway. So we'll go through that. But I think other than that, I'm pretty much ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this update. And ignore the prereq warnings because we have already reviewed them. We are gonna enable uh, That's interesting that, that it it'll remove the CAS. I haven't got I obviously haven't got a CAS, but it's interesting that it will remove it as part of this update. Uh, it be good to enable the community hub. It's pretty useful. The um, other one we can enable previews replication requests per device and BitLocker management. I'm going to leave this off for now because that's one of the labs to to enable that and migrate from MBAM into BitLocker management. So other than that, I think we're ready to go and update. I'll just go ahead and update the client without validating. I really don't want to validate in a, in a pre-production environment. I don't even have any clients at the moment, so we'll just go ahead and click next. And next again. And that's gonna go away and update for the next hour or so. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll wait for this to finish and then I'll see you in the next video. All right, so that's it for this video. Next, we're going to connect our on-premise environment to the cloud using Azure AD Connect to create a hybrid Azure environment, and then we'll run through the rest of the labs. If you've enjoyed this and this has been useful to you, please click the like button, and if you want to see more on what we do next, please subscribe. See you next time.